Hi everyone, Phil from Tech for Techs here. Today we're going to be looking at this from Arctic. It's the Arctic Freezer 240 RGB. It's their first RGB water cooler. Arctic's usually well known for their high performance and so forth on their coolers, but we're going to see today if the RGB version is any good or not. The recommended retail price of this version is €89.99. They do have a version as well which has got a controller for €99.99. We do have links in the description below. Before we go on to the main video, if you would do us a favour, click that like button, subscribe, click the bell as well, and that way you'll get notifications of new videos and live streams we do. Again, doing all these things helps support the channel, and helping to support the channel allows us to release more videos, better quality videos, and more content exclusively just for you. Okay, today we're looking at the Arctic Liquid Freezer 2 240 RGB multi-compatible all-in-one water cooler with RGB. Bear in mind, this is the RGB version. They also have an ARGB version and a version what's got a controller which is RGB and ARGB as well. So there's sort of four versions of this. But if you are using this one, this one needs to connect up to a traditional RGB header on your motherboard or controller. If you're using the one what's at ARGB, you need to make sure you've got an addressable RGB header on your motherboard or controller, otherwise it's not going to work. Well, it'll probably cool your computer down, but the lights just will not come on. Otherwise, it has got thermal paste included, so it's got the MX5, which is pretty good. We reviewed that a few weeks ago, and it scored very highly. It's got a six-year warranty, which is, uh, to my knowledge, one of the highest I've seen on a water cooler. And it's also got the custom RGB, which we just spoke about. It is compatible with lots of different controllers and motherboards out there, so you shouldn't really have an issue as long as you get the right connector. As I mentioned, this is RGB, so you need to plug into an RGB header. And it's for Intel and AMD sockets. We'll go more into that in a few seconds. Okay, on this side there isn't much to see. It's got a few different languages. It's got a QR code as well to get the manual up and specifications and stuff. But there is a list of specifications at the bottom here. It tells you things along the lines of it having a copper base. It supports sockets 1150, 51, 55, 56, as well as 2011 dash 3 and 2066 and AM4. So that gives you a bit of information there. It's got two 120 millimeter fans, which are the Arctic P series fans, which are obviously RGB, which is pretty good. It's got fluid dynamic bearings and a few other bits and bobs as well, which you probably don't want to see now, but you can have a look at the specifications when we put in the description above. On the other side of the box, it doesn't say much, it just says about support and feedback, and it's got a QR code on there as well. On the top, there's not a lot to see, it just says what it is. And then on the bottom as well, it's just got a couple of barcodes, so not a huge amount on there. It also states that Arctic are carbon neutral as well, if you're into that sort of thing, which is a bonus. Okay, let's start off with the least needed thing in the box, and that's all these plastic bags. There's one, two, three, four, five, seven plastic bags inside this box. You don't need seven plastic bags. Most of these screws can all go in one, or you can put them into a cardboard cup or something along that lines. Yes, you're carbon neutral, but plastic bags are just as bad at the moment in the environment, all over the TV and so forth. I would suggest uh, figuring a way to cut that down if you can. But otherwise, let's get on to the main product. So we've got the back plate, which goes on the back of the motherboard. So you put that on the back side of the motherboard. You usually put a couple of screws through your motherboard to attach that. And then you've got these brackets, which then attach to the water cooler itself. We'll look a bit more at that in a few seconds. You've also got some rings as well, which go into strengthening the holes or uh, stop conductivity on the holes. And then you've got some MX5, which you apply yourself rather than it being pre-applied. So you can apply it however you wish. But otherwise, that's pretty much everything in there. So you've got the brackets. These ones are going to be for Intel. Those are from AMD. That's the back plate you'll put on the back of the board. Thermal compound and then all the screws and fittings you'll need otherwise. 
Okay, so let's have a look at the cooler itself. The first thing I notice on the cooler, and it's the same with all the Liquid Freezer 2s, is the minimalistic cabling. There isn't much on it. On a lot of water coolers you get, you've got cables coming from the fans to plug the fans into the motherboard, and then maybe RGB ones on top of that, and then you've got different cables coming from the water block itself, or the CPU block, and you end up having six, seven, eight, or even more cables. Well, it's pretty good on this, to be honest, because, well, there's basically just two cables. One to power it, which is this one here, what you plug into a normal four pin fan socket on your motherboard, and then you've got your RGB connector, which you connect up to your RGB on your motherboard. Again, this is a four pin RGB. That is your 12 volt connector. It also has a pass through as well. So you can connect another RGB device. Again, it has to be RGB and not addressable digital or any other name, standard RGB device directly into this. So it can all run through the same connector, which is pretty good thinking to be honest because a lot of motherboards only have one header on them. So if you've got two devices, you can't connect them up. So comparing this to the traditional Liquid Freezer 2, the only thing I see which is different from what I can see is actually the fans themselves. They've got clear blades on them and I'm guessing there's gonna be some RGB lighting in there. Otherwise, it looks identical. All the cabling for the fans runs all the way through the braiding here on the actual water pipes and then goes into the water block where you control all from there. You also have that nice little fan there for the VRM which keeps it nice and cool on your motherboard so that's an extra bonus most water coolers don't have. I don't see any RGB effects on the water block itself but I'm not going to be able to see that exactly until we plug it in and obviously you'll find that out in a few minutes. Otherwise, if you want to fit this on the back, obviously you've got your copper plate, which has this piece of plastic on, which you have to peel off. Obviously you put your thermal paste on there or your CPU and attach it. But these are the little clips, these are the Intel ones. They basically sit on there like that. You put a screw through it and then one on that side and that will then screw into that back plate or into your motherboard depending on how you've got it set up. So it's pretty straightforward. The minimal amount of cabling uh, is ideal. Uh, there's nothing more I uh, hate on water coolers is all the cabling, especially when you've got ones which have got three fans on it. In some cases, even six fans on them, you can have cables everywhere. The cables, as you can probably see from the screen, are nicely braided and you've got this sort of like a track line going through them all the way around. It spirals around all the way to the top to the bottom. The radiator again is, I think they class it as industry leading, which I'm pretty sure it is because we have the best results using liquid freezer 2s on cooling devices. They could always come out on top. And again, it's pretty nice. It's all black. There's no marks, there's no bent ones, which you can get on some of them. The, they get bent in the packaging and stuff like that. It looks pristine. It looks as it should. It's got their branding on top, what says Arctic. But we're gonna plug this in now do some testing on it, see if it's as good as cooling as the non-RGB version, and then also see what the RGB effects look like. Okay, so down to testing. All testing was done on the same machine. The only difference between the machine is obviously when we change the water cooler itself. All fan speeds were set at either 50% or 100%. We don't use auto mode because obviously auto mode will adjust these fan speeds automatically to cool it down more if the machine gets hotter. So we use set speeds when doing testing. The specifications for the machine are in the description below, but in basics we use the 10700KF i7 Intel processor. The only things we changed on each test was the water cooler itself, as well as the thermal paste, and we, our thermal paste of choice was Arctic MX5 Thermal Compound. Okay, so down to testing. In this first test, we check the idle temperature. That's where the machine is sitting doing nothing for 30 minutes. We collect the average temperature, and that's with the fan running at 50% speed. And as you can see here, the RGB version of the Liquid Freezer 2 gets pretty much the same temperature as all the others. If you're not sure which one the RGB is on the graph, it's the one in red on the right-hand side. In this next test, we check to see how hot the CPU gets when it's under full load for 30 minutes. And we get the average temperature over that 30 minute period 
and we see what the results we get and as you can see here the fan speed is also running at 50 percent the liquid freezer 2 the rgb version did run a little bit hotter than the standard 240 mil version but we're talking about one degree here so it's not a huge difference on this next test we basically do the same thing again but this time we run the fans at 100 percent speed and again you're looking at roughly a two degree difference between the RGB version and the non-RGB version and we'll come to that in a few minutes as to why it's running a little bit warmer but saying that it's still performing pretty well especially for an RGB cooler which generally do run hotter and it's not because of the lights and on this test, we are basically checking to see how hot it got when we overclocked the CPU to 5.1 gigahertz. And as you can see here, it got again two degrees hotter than the non-RGB version. So again, this was sort of expected to be honest with you, but I wanted to double check before we went on to the conclusion. The reason why it's running a little bit hotter than the non-RGB version is not necessarily because there's lights on there and the cores heat, it's because they have to design the fan slightly different and in this case the fan does not push as much air through as the non-RGB version, hence more heat is kept in the radiator and it doesn't cool down as well. So what are the differences between the coolers other than the fans? From what I can see, um, it's only a few things. Bear in mind, Arctic didn't send me any specifics. I'm just going by what they've said on their website. But the power consumption is 0.5 watts less on the pump than on the RGB version than the non-RGB. But that's very little to be honest to be talk about. But the main thing is the static pressure. On the RGB version, it's 1.85 compared to 2.2 on the non-RGB. And again, uh, the airflow is 48.4 cubic feet per minute compared to 56.3 cubic feet per minute. That means that the airflow is a lot less, so it's not able to cool it down as efficiently as the non-RGB version. So again, if you want total performance, the non-RGB version is the one to go for. But saying that, it's still very, very, very good performance you're getting on the RGB version. And again, the RGB version uh, is a very nice looking cooler. As I said, it gives you all the performance, minus a little bit, that the non-RGB version does, but it just makes your machine look a little bit nicer. So in conclusion, which one would you buy? Well, it's really up to you. If you want the highest performance possible, you buy the non-RGB version. If you're not bothered by that one or two degrees difference, which is that, that's all it is, is one to two degrees difference, then the RGB version will be absolutely fine for you. It'll make pretty much no difference at all in your cooling inside your machine. It won't really affect overclocking or anything when you're only talking about one to two degrees. Now, don't get me wrong, if it was 10 degrees, I'd be saying, yeah, stay away from it, but it's not. It's 1 to 2 degrees, which is very minimal when we're talking about temperatures that we're actually talking about. So overall, I'm very happy with this product, and I can't do anything but highly recommend this. Thank you for watching this video, everyone. It's really appreciated you made it all the way to the end. Please make sure you subscribe, like, comment, and even click that bell so you get notifications of new videos and live streams. It does help support the channel, and supporting the channel basically means that we can release more content for you, and also better quality content going forward. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time. <laughs>